Welcome to my recap of the first two weeks of the Derek Chauvin trial. Hey, my name is Nate the Lawyer, and welcome to the Brody's Bunch, where you are the jury of today's content. If you haven't already, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you like what you hear. Let's get to it. So today, I've simplified what's happening. So we're going to look at the government's case against Derek Chauvin, and we're going to look at some of the defendants' rebuttals to what's being presented. The charges are, count one, charge, second-degree murder, unintentional while committing a felony. This is your felony murder statute. And here it says, namely, assault in the third degree. Count two, charge, third-degree murder, perpetuating eminently dangerous act and evincing depraved mind. Count three, charge, second-degree manslaughter, culpable negligence, creating unreasonable risk. So I'm going to simplify the legal issues to make it easier to follow and understand. Now remember, this is not legal advice, this is commentary. So let's start off with this. What does the government have to prove to convict Derek Chauvin? So I've simplified this for everybody to understand. First, the state is trying to prove that Derek Chauvin committed an assault, and that he was not authorized to use that force against George Floyd. The state is also going to try to prove that Derek Chauvin was the substantial cause of Mr. Floyd's death. If the state cannot prove that Derek Chauvin was not authorized to use this amount of force, or that Derek Chauvin was not the substantial cause to George Floyd's death, then they will not be able to get a conviction. So let's focus in on the first part of this analysis, the assault. So the state is saying that this, which you're seeing here on the screen, was an assault. The state is saying that this was intentional and that this caused serious bodily harm. Now, I need you to take out the fact that these are officers effectuating an arrest. If these were just plain individual citizens doing this particular act that was intentionally, intentionally holding him down, and it caused serious bodily harm, they killed him, this would technically be an assault. The fact that Derek Chauvin and these are officers will come into play later in our analysis. But for right now, if these were four guys, three of them holding someone down, tied up in handcuffs, one person with the knee on the neck, this would be an assault. Now to prove that this happened and that this was an assault, an intentional assault that caused serious bodily harm, the state called witnesses, witnesses who were there at the scene. These witnesses all testified that they were screaming, you know, hey, he's not breathing, he's this, to show the intentionality of Derek Chauvin's actions. He intended to do this. And so you can see, here are these witnesses at the scene. Here's the MMA fighter, for instance. Here's the off-duty firefighter. Here's the gentleman who was actually telling Floyd to comply early in the incident. And here's a young lady who also testified on the stand that she witnessed the assault. So the state trying to prove this assault has brought these witnesses forward to show that, yes, this was intentional. We were telling him this person was in trouble and this caused serious bodily injury. He was killed. But the analysis can't stop there. See, Derek Chauvin was a police officer and police officers are authorized to use force to arrest people. Now, generally, these things would be considered assaults, but since he is an officer, the law authorizes him to use force to effectuate arrest. So the prosecution, to prove the assault, has to prove that Derek Chauvin wasn't authorized as a law enforcement officer to commit this assault. So we're going to go to the Minnesota Penal Court, Section 609.06, Authorized Use of Force. When authorized, except as otherwise provided in Subdivision 2, reasonable force may be used upon or toward a person of another without the other's consent when the following circumstances exist or the actor reasonably believes them to exist. Subsection 1, when used by a public officer or one assisting a public officer under the public officer's direction and subsection A and subsection A in effecting a lawful arrest. But the crux of this statute here, which authorizes the use of force and essentially authorizes assault against citizens under these narrow circumstances, is that that force must be reasonable. If it's not reasonable, you're not authorized to use force, and you've committed an assault. So now we see the state's case starting to play out. The assault was not authorized under the state statute. How do you know it was authorized? How do you know it's reasonable? Let's, let's use another example. Let's say you get sick and go to the hospital. Now the medical board and all of the administration at the hospital says for your illness, you are supposed to get pill A. And pill B even though it's in the literature as something that could be effective, the medical board and hospital says you cannot prescribe pill B. But your doctor says, hey, you know what? I don't like pill A. I'm going to prescribe pill B instead. So unfortunately for you, you die. Your family then sues the hospital. You will then first call experts from the medical board saying, hey, you guys said he should prescribe pill A for my ailment, right? Not pill B. You'll also call the other physicians, right? 
what do you prescribe during this time? Was pill B supposed to be prescribed? They'll say no. And that's how you educate the jury on what doctors do, because obviously you don't have a jury full of doctors. You have a jury full of regular people. So these professionals are going to tell you what doctors are supposed to do in this situation. The same thing with police. Police are trained. Police take classroom instruction. And police graduate from the academy, and they have manuals and policies that they have to follow. So in the Chauvin case, the best people to tell you what those policies are the chief of police, the homicide detective who investigated the case and is the longest serving officer in the department, the head of the training academy, that officer's immediate supervisor, another one of the officer's direct supervisors, the medical coordinator for the department, the use of force trainer, a use of force expert, and a police surgeon with 20 years of experience. All of these officers, all of these law enforcement professionals can testify to whether your techniques follow the guidelines and policies of this department. And as you can see, the majority of people who are testifying are of the department. And even more importantly, they all say that this was not reasonable, this was not trained, and this was an excessive use of force. So through those witnesses, the state is showing that Derek Chauvin was not authorized to use the technique that he was using for the amount of time that he was using it against George Floyd. So This is at the scene, testifying to the assault. The professionals in the field in the department are testifying to the unauthorized use of force. And this is what the state has presented in the first 10 days. But now there's a second part to this analysis. Even if this was an assault, was it the substantial cause of Mr. Floyd's death? That's the only way you get the murder charges. So the state calls experts, Dr. Martin Tubin. They even called forensic pathologists, the medical examiner, the police sergeant and toxicology. They all testify that the substantial cause of death of George Floyd was Derek Chauvin. So now we can see the people's case come together and we can start filling in some of these places. Witnesses to prove the assault, witnesses to prove that the assault was unauthorized by statute, witnesses to prove the cause of death. But Derek Chauvin's defense team has rebutted some of these allegations. First, let's talk about the assault. Derek Chauvin's defense attorney has said the crowd being as belligerent as they were caused the officers to have to wait to give Mr. Floyd aid because they were in fear of the crowd. Now, they didn't actually attack the underlying assault, but they did say the crowd was a factor. Second, to attack whether this was authorized or not, the defense attorney brings up a couple of different issues. First, that this technique was in the training manual and that Derek Chauvin was trained to use this technique. Even though the training officers specifically said he was not, the defense attorney has showed material showing that he may have been. Also, the defense attorney says that this use of force was authorized because of the extenuating circumstances. Remember earlier, we were talking about the crowd. When you have a crowd that's agitated, the officer's attention are going to be toward the crowd and less likely toward the person who they are arresting because they're in fear for their safety. And third, they bring up the fact that George Floyd was resisting arrest and that their use of force was to overcome that resistance. The defense attorney is hoping that all these things would counteract the fact that all these officers from their own department is saying that this was not authorized, this was excessive, and this was not based on policy. So the defense also tried to attack the cause of death. So how did they do that? Well, first, they brought up that George Floyd had drugs in the system and that Derek Chauvin's knee may not have been the substantial cause, but a contributing cause, where the main cause of death could have been an overdose. The second thing the defense brought up is that George Floyd had heart disease, and that heart disease likely played a larger role in his death. There was testimony in which if everything was held equal and George Floyd was just found dead, the medical examiner would have said that he died of heart disease. And last, that George Floyd's pre-existing conditions were the substantial factor in his death and not the officer's actions that day. But again, this contradicts all of the expert testimony so far. They all say in unison that George Floyd died because of the actions of the officers. So at the end of the day, you have assault that's not authorized, that was a substantial cause of someone's death. And the prosecution has provided witnesses who are at the scene, police officials who are familiar with the training of policies, and medical experts to prove that Derek Chauvin was a substantial cause in George Floyd's death. And the defense has rebutted all of these claims. So at the end of the day, what do you think? There are a couple of things I have to mention. Number one, we're just hearing from one side, the prosecution. We have yet to hear from the defense side. So things may change. My mind may change. Your mind may change. So understand, you're only hearing one side of the story. 
But how do you feel? Do you think the prosecution is doing a good job? Do you think they're doing a bad job? Do you think they've proven most of their case? There are more experts to come next week and then the defense gets to put on its case. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'm out of here.